Well, as I said, my name is Shannon Costello with E, and I'm the communications officer for Elkhorn Marine Conservancy. Mm -hmm. We are a nonprofit organization uh, who are trying to enhance the resilience and stewardship of Antigua and Barbuda's marine ecosystems. Mm -hmm. So that's your coral reefs, your seagrass, and your mangroves. Mm -hmm. And we do this through active restoration, uh, collaborative management, as well as research. And um, one of our pillars is engaging with the community. And um, we found that when we were doing a lot of community events and when we were speaking to the people, a lot of people don't know how to swim. And living on an island nation, that just blew my mind. So how am I supposed to ask someone that doesn't even go in the ocean to protect the ocean? You know, and they don't have a relationship with it. So we decided to do this program with Splashing with Clashing, mm -hmm. which is a mother-daughter duo with 20 plus years experience swimming, uh, swimming instruction. And um, so we created this program for adults because it's easy to teach kids how to swim, but it's the adults who can't go in the water with the kids, you know? Mm -hmm. So we created this program to kind of, you know, get more people into the water and start a relationship with the ocean and so they can become stewards themselves. Because mm -hmm. I mean, people have a lot of fear of, mm -hmm. of the ocean because there's so much about it that we don't know, it, yeah. you know, and me, I, I, I don't want no jellyfish sting me. That has always been a concern of mine. And as a matter of fact, it would be our decision on where it is that we go to swim. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. we know some beaches would have a lot more jellyfish sightings than with others. Um, what is the state of our coral reefs I here in Antigua? Mm -hmm. Antigua? Um, it was known for having fields upon fields of the Elkhorn, which we've been named after, mm -hmm. and the Staghorn Coral, which is as the name applies. Mm -hmm. They look like Elkhorn and Staghorn. Mm -hmm. Those are your reef building corals. And um, there was a disease that hit them in the 80s. Reef filling? A uh, reef building. Oh, reef building. Yeah, so like they're like the foundations. Okay. And then after that, you get like your boulder corals, like your brain coral and so yeah. on. And um, there was a disease that hit Antigua in the 80s that wiped out 80% of them. Yeah. yeah, like you go swimming now and you could just see like the skeletal remains as far as the eye can see. And you could see what was there before, huge elk horn that took years upon years to grow and it's just dead on the reef, reef bed. And then we have other things like um, climate change. So I don't know if, if anybody of your listeners especially go out in the water and they notice that the water is a lot hotter than it used to be. So last summer, we had um, a bleaching event. When I say bleaching, um, the corals turn white mm -hmm. because the sea temperature rose. So if the sea temperature rises by 1.5 degree, it could kill out all the coral reefs. That means no fishes. No fishes, exactly. There's a, there's a cycle to it, you know, mm -hmm. a chain reaction. And um, so what happens to the, the coral, why it turns white, is that they have an algae that lives in it um, that is like almost like a plant. Mm -hmm. And of course, it creates food through photosynthesis and it gives it its color. Mm -hmm. But the corals get stressed and they release that algae. And that's why they turn white and they essentially starve to death. Because that plant actually provides 90% of its energy to grow and to reproduce. There are persons who don't quite understand what, what is the coral itself. Because mm -hmm. they think the coral is the hard external yeah. thing that they see. Yeah. Um, what exactly is the coral? It's actually an animal. It's a living, breathing animal. Um, but it has characteristics of a plant and a, of a rock. So when I say an animal, they, like if you look closely, they have like little holes. Those are called polyps. And in those holes, there's a central mouth that's surrounded by tentacles that actually have like stinging harpoons mm -hmm. that grab mm -hmm. all the nutrients that are passing through. So you're like your plankton and your small fish and so on. You know, you can't see it with your naked eye, mm -hmm. but it feeds into the coral through that mouth, and then the byproduct of it is calcium, calcium carbonate, mm -hmm. which is what gives it its strength and its mm -hmm. shape. And then, of course, you have this algae that lives within the polyp tissue, that also provides ninety percent of its energy. And its color. And its color. Yeah. So that's why you have such a variety of different colored coral when they're healthy. Yeah, it feels like bath water now. Like, I mean, I just came from the beach, hence why my hair is a little wet. And, and um, but like I went in to cool down 
and I'm not cooling down. Yeah. It's it's you could feel the temperature, and like they say, this summer is going to be even hotter because it kind of coincides with the El Nino year mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So the El Nino um, it changes the sea currents and it's bringing down a lot of hot water, and that also contributes to the rising sea temperatures. And last year. It never really cooled down. No, it? no. So like these corals can recover when they turn white. You know, they can get back the algae, but that's if the waters cool down. Mm -hmm. And um, otherwise, like, yeah, when we go diving, we could see like we lost all of our outlands. So we earlier last year, we planted, um, I think it was 7000 outlands and they all died. All of them gone. And then we lost 70% of our coral nursery. And so we're trying different tactics. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to adapt to survive. So we have uh, like deeper nurseries, you know, we have an online lab right now that mm -hmm. we're starting up. Mm -hmm. So we can hold those special uh, specimens that we, that, you know, the critically endangered ones in a controlled environment. Mm -hmm. So we can keep them cool. Mm -hmm. We're putting shades on our structures. So in our nurseries, we put um, coral fragments on ropes and trees. Trees are like PVC Christmas trees and you can hang like the fragments like ornaments mm -hmm. and we're putting shades over that to see if that could help the impact of like that midday sun just beating down on them. People can create artificial reefs mm -hmm. using like used cars, used ships, you know um, there's a man in Grenada he created like these um, concrete um, pyramids it looks like a pyramid mm -hmm. and then he started planting coral onto that but the idea for Elko and Marine is that we have had this spectacular reef bed it's there so what we do is we clear an area and then we plant when I say plant we don't we can't dig it up of course mm -hmm. but we use like cement or epoxy to, to stick the coral fragments onto that reef bed because we want to like rejuvenate what's already there yeah. rather than create an unnatural um, substrate. Um, I mean, as an island nation, we have a very high capita of fish consumption. Um, I know everybody loves the chub fish. Ah. Yeah. So chub is also called a parrotfish, mm -hmm. and we need parrotfish on the coral reefs because that actually controls the algae that grows around the coral. If the parrotfish and those other kind of um, you know reef helping fish are not there, the algae eventually smothers the coral. And I could kill it. So I know, I know it tastes good. I know it does, but we have to give it chance to reproduce, to get sexually to. matured, so that they can get more. And then, mm. then please, by all means, you know, fish out if the population is there. Then you know, let's carry on. Mm. But you know, we have to adhere to those closed seasons. That's and okay. like you know, when you're catching fish, uh, a lot of people are using techniques like scenes and so on that are just catching everything. You know, it's not discriminatory. And so you're catching these small juvenile fish as well. And um, it's just not getting, getting a chance to grow up, reproduce, create more, to, you know, carry on with this high demand. So they have closed seasons here, um, which, you know, the government have put in effect. And it's supposed to be around the time when these fish are supposed to be reproducing. Yeah. Um, but it's, the governing is hard. You know, you, you can't... Enforcement. Yeah, you, you can't follow every single man jack that's taking a boat and going out and fishing and checking what he caught. You know, it's difficult. Also, you know, fam people have families to feed. Like, you know, as you said, with children and so on. You know, you can't look at your kids and say, sorry, I didn't catch anything today. Yeah. So I, I understand that. But if you want your children to be able to enjoy the fish as well for the generations to come, we have to monitor what we're catching. Use a uh, fishing line, just a normal fishing line, so if you catch something that should go back, you could easily unhook it yeah. and throw it back in. Uh, we have a actually a snorkel club, Sunday snorkel club coming up. Yeah? Yeah, so I mean for those that might be interested, um, basically we're going to go meet at Long Bay mm -hmm. and um, we're going to do it in groups. So you know, for those that are not really comfortable in the water, don't want to spend a long time, we could do a shorter one to those that are more, you know, could go for an hour and you know, enjoy it. At what time? So it'll be from 2.30 to 5.30 mm -hmm. and you have to register. So to do that, you could contact me on our Instagram page, which is at EMC Antigua mm -hmm. or on our website, 
you'll see the email address um, info at emcantigua.org. Mm -hmm. So if you contact me, tell me the whole is all event, um, all family members are invited. So okay. all ages, we're going to have lifeguards there. We're going to do it safe so that everybody can have fun. Mm -hmm. And um, and so we're going to have that event, and that's going to happen ever every quarter. And then we're going to choose different locations around Antigua. The snorkeling. Yeah. So it's, it's a way of building awareness. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really nice. So you said this Sunday? No, Sunday, September twenty so second. The twenty second yeah. of of September. Yes. Yes. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. nice. And then of course we'll have lessons as well. Um, it will be an annual thing. So this is our second annual mm -hmm. uh, program that we've run. It will be mainly during summertime because a lot of people take holidays. Yeah. You know, so it's a little bit easier to get there. And um, so listen out to our social media for the next posting. Or you could contact me as well on the same same ways and I could put you on the waiting list for next year. 